Hi folks, we gather online once again, together while we remain apart. Welcome to my home for worship and prayer as we celebrate the Lord's Day on this sixth Sunday of Easter. Let's sing together. God is here. It's number 526 in the Red Worship Book. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let's pray. Almighty and ever-living God, you hold together all things in heaven and on earth. In your great mercy, receive the prayers of all your children and give to the world the spirit of your truth and peace, through Christ our Lord. Amen. If you love me, you will keep my commandments. And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate, to be with you forever. This is the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees him nor knows him. You know him, because he abides with you, and he will be in you. I will not leave you orphaned. I am coming to you. In a little while the world will no longer see me, but you will see me. Because I live, you also will live. On that day you will know that I am in my Father, and you in me, and I in you. They who have my commandments and keep them are those who love me, and those who love me will be loved by my Father, and I will love them and reveal myself to them. You are not alone. You will never be left alone. Into troubled hearts, the fear of abandonment and loss, despair and grief, Jesus gives assurance that there will be another advocate, the Spirit who walks alongside us everywhere and always. Jesus has been guiding, teaching, challenging, reminding and comforting the disciples. What they have known in Jesus and are beginning to fear losing, they will always know in the promise of the Advocate. 
Jesus promises the Spirit just when the disciples, just when we are most in need of his care. It's at that moment, at this moment, during Jesus' last night with his disciples, that the promise of the Spirit's presence is so meaningful. Jesus knows that what lies ahead we cannot do on our own, that what we will be called to face we cannot do without his help. That in our temptation to do all the things, reminders will be necessary, that it's not our job to do everything. And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to be with you forever. So simple, really. The Spirit will accompany us. The Spirit will be with us. When all the world is changing before our eyes, so quickly we can hardly focus to see, this is just what we need. The Spirit walks with us our ever-present companion, embodying Jesus' very presence. Friends, even as we are worried and troubled by many things that are part of our pandemic world today, hear the good news in Jesus' words. Not only of Jesus' presence, but also the promise of God's continuing accompaniment. And know that this same Spirit promised to the disciples in one of their darkest hours is God's promise for us as well. Amen.
Joined together with common faith and purpose, we pray for the church, the world, and all in need. Gracious God, we pray for the church in all its varied expressions. Continue to give faith and perseverance to those who step forward to follow you and grant courage for these difficult times when the world undergoes dramatic change. We pray especially for our bishops, Susan and Michael, and for our area dean, Stephen. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Creator God, we pray for your touch, making all things new. Create in us a desire to protect all things that walk upon the earth, swim in its waters and fly in the air. Those that grow in watery depths, wetlands on forest floors and dry tundra. Help us to reduce carbon emissions for cleaner air and plastic waste for cleaner water and land. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Ever-present and healing God, we pray for all who suffer the effects of COVID-19 virus worldwide. We pray for those who are in hospital and those who stay isolated at home. We pray for those who live in fear, depression, or loneliness. Make your presence known in real and tangible ways. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Friend and Savior of the world, we pray for all frontline workers who risk exposure to care and provide for others. Lord, keep them healthy, safe, and protected. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Loving God, we pray for those who are sick and for those in long-term care. We pray for families who are grieving. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, especially we pray today for those who stand in special need. We remember today Shirley Kay and the family of Rod H. who grieve his passing. We remember those we name in our hearts. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Merciful God, we thank you for signs of hope you bring, for joyful acts of kindness and generosity of spirit. We thank you for the gradual loosening of restrictions around physical distancing, and we thank you for the scientific progressions that work toward a vaccine. We thank you for the calm reason and gentle spiritedness among people. Let hope abound in us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Compassionate God, we lift our prayers to you. Those we speak, those that are silent, and those that only you know, trusting in the promise of your mercy and grace through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Peace of Christ be with you. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let's pray now as Jesus taught us.
I want to take a moment now to express my thanks to all of you who have been working in different ways to keep the church going. When you drive by, you will see that the lawns and gardens have been beautifully cared for and our building is being tended to regularly. Our mail is being picked up daily, bills are being paid and your donations received. Accounting work is being done remotely, office communications prepared, online meetings are arranged for anyone wishing to have committee meetings, prayer group, or just to socialize. Just let us know and, and we will assist you in getting you together. Thank you for your generosity in giving so that we are able to meet our monthly current expenses, as well as providing help for our neighbors in need. We have received heartfelt thanks from the Food Bank, House of Friendship, Canadian Lutheran World Relief, St. Peter's TV Ministry, and from Bishop Michael on behalf of the Eastern Synod. We have continued to give to the broader church and its work to support others who need help in Canada and throughout the world. Sisters and brothers, you do good work. Thank you all for showing who we are in such a profound way at this time. Now, may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and grant you peace. Amen.